to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at michaels.ca. I just let you all load in. We have 400 participants so far coming into the room right now and welcome aboard. And uh, we'll have a quick introduction. We'll let you get settled. Hopefully you got your martini, maybe an adult beverage of something, um, something to have some fun with today. I have my cup of tea. I'm a tea drinker, just in case you care. And uh, I worked at a coffee shop when I was like 13. I, I like the smell of coffee. Just never the taste of it. So we'll let you load into the room. You can use the chat to talk amongst yourselves here on board. We also have a Michael's team and your inspirations team behind the scenes. So Julie's the first to respond to me. So she is a tea drinker too. I'm like the queen, okay, um, Elton. Um, I like milk and sugar in my orange pico tea. So I'm not a fancy tea drinker. So Daniel met me and he says, oh, I hope you like tea. I'm like, yeah, I like tea, but I like the same tea. I'm like a dog. I eat, the, I eat and drink the same stuff all the time. But he has been home way too much right now with his whole COVID thing. And he has been pulling out those things. So I had goulash the other night. And then he made this rose water cake the other night. Anyway, I heaved that cake out in the backyard. The crows literally swooped down to go for the cake and they went <laughs> i'm like i know leave it for the raccoon it eats anything so uh, we are having a lot of fun here at home uh we hope that you're enjoying yourself and welcome to the michael's online community classroom where we're broadcasting all from home i'm from nova scotia i'm your host mikey behind the scenes we have some fabulous people to introduce on behalf of michael's we have tom 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 as in tom Selleck. we also have uh stacy from michael's and she'll be talking to you later so if you think it's jesus it's just her and then we have ali my my friend from yarn inspirations she is my co-worker pretty much and uh we have it just like this and then debbie is keeping control of all of us with her lasso and uh those uh, michael's team is down from texas as far as i know so and then ali's from north carolina and i'm here from nova scotia canadian so i speak canadian a eh? so hopefully you, you can understand me here um i wish that i would have paid attention to french when i uh, like when I came into school, I'm like, I'm never going to need that. I can't even order a friggin' tea by myself in Quebec. So I know le sucre or something. I don't know. So I get my Spanish, my French all mixed up. So welcome aboard. Uh, we hope that you're going to enjoy yourself today. And uh, anybody that's new, say pound into your keyboard. If you're new here, you've never been to a Michael's class before. These are free online workshops. It's something new that they're trying. So uh, we're pretty much all just saying that we're just trying. So if we screw up, that's fun. You're part of the screw up. It's all good. Oh my God, look at all the new people. You're just pounding that in. New, 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 new. So who's been here before? So pound that in. Say I'm a returner or I'm experienced. So uh, we, have, we have a repeater and a returner and a newbie. So I've got lots of interesting people today. We hope that you've enjoyed. Um, we're actually been, we're gonna be coming back in a few weeks, uh, I've been told as of this morning with another workshop. So we have something fun. We do see the project, mm, bring your tissues. We might get salivating because it's so fun and ha. So um, we're gonna be doing today, we're going to be working through uh, a motif sampler. So maybe some of you have seen the, the um, the previews for that. So my goal here is that, you know, when you go to a workshop and the teacher says, well, do this, do that. And then you leave the class and you don't know nothing. So the goal for me is never to leave you hanging because my first ever workshop I did back in 2010, I did a major festival. And they said, can you teach? And I'm like, why not? So anyway, they stuck me with 25 new women, like new, like barely, barely could even know how to hold the hook. And I had three criers and I'm like, oh, you know, and so the whole point of a recorded video is to have something that you can use afterward, but so that you can use your skill afterwards. So you kind of learn that everybody's at a different pace. So we're going to be hooking you up later with some information, just in case you're going, I'm going too quickly for you, because some of you are going to be like, oh my God, just get on with it. And some of you are going to wait, wait a minute you know, what's a crochet hook. So uh, we are at intermediate level for this uh, particular workshop today. And uh, it's gonna be interesting. So later on, if you're left-handed, we have those videos already ready for you. We also have closed captioning. So if you're hard of hearing or in the deaf community, we also have you covered and that'll be available tomorrow. So what we have right now is the motif sampler. I'm gonna get you started. Let's go on to the fun stuff. So uh, behind the scenes, Stacy is gonna be switching off my camera to see the hands. So if you see this camera right here, 
I know you get to see, oh, look, she is so quick with her fingers. So here is my desk and uh, you're seeing my lap underneath. So uh, what we have is this bad boy right here. Now, anybody behind the scenes, you don't like to write on your patterns. I'm not one of them. Somebody said it's sacrilegious, whatever. If you're ever gonna revisit a pattern, you wanna write down your notes. So I'm a pencil user, so I like my pencils and uh, I write my notes on stuff. And so you can see that I looked at the front page, nothing is going on there. And then page number two is like, oh my goodness. And then page number three, well, I know, what are you getting yourselves involved with today? You signed up, honeys, you were in big trouble. So I go through my notes and I kind of figure out where you, my friends, are going to be slipping up so that I can do it. So when I slip up, I realize that you might be slipping up. So uh, slipping up. So uh, April says that she likes to write things on her patterns too. Um, but where can I get this pattern? So my friends up Michael's and your inspirations, I think they're going to be pounding some info. Oh, look at that. Michael's very good. So behind the scenes, they're working really hard there. So it's Katie doing that. So I want to take you through a little bit of the pattern review. So on the videos, people are saying, just get on with it and just show me how to do that. The whole point of a pattern review, do you remember? Okay, let's be honest here. Okay, camera back up on my face. So um, grade eight, I have a book report to do and the teacher wants us to read this god awful book. And so she makes this book all sound sexy. Oh, I gotta read it. And then you get a few pages and it's like, ugh, you know. So I've only read one book in my adult life. I know my whole Michael's crew behind the scene is like, oh, Tom is like, and we put this guy on camera. I'm just telling you. So whatever I read comes across through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, I'm good to go. That's all I need to know in my life. The advantage of a pattern review is that you can actually get somebody like me to kind of just go through the pattern and just realize that there's where you're going to slip up and where you can just like sail through. So if you go back down to the camera there, Stacy. Hey, Mikey, it's Allie here. I just wanted to uh, um, cool. call attention to somebody said, um, it looks like it might be too hard for me. Um, and I just wanted to remind everybody that this recording will be available tomorrow and you'll be able to rewatch it as many times as you want. So mm -hmm. um, if you feel like things are going too fast, this recording will be available for you to watch at your leisure. So ladies and gentlemen, and those are to be decided. I'm gonna take it nice and slow today. This is the whole point of our video service is that we are going to put the power into your hands to go as fast or as slow as you like it. So let's have some yarn play today and go nice and slow and work our way through these sexy stitches. So what we have here on screen here, I can't really blow this, but I, but I can hold it up like this. And there is a crochet diagram. Anybody worried so far, raise your hand if you're worried. Say, oh my God, look at that. And look at all of his notes and everything like that. Anybody worried? So, uh, <laughs> oh my God, worried. Yes, 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 me, me, me. <laughs> this sounds like a great Saturday night. Yes, yes, yes. Honey, I'm gonna get just hooked up, okay? So just gotta put a little bit of trust in this nerd behind the camera. So what we're looking at here is we have a tutorial series on how to be able to read these kind of diagrams. So if you're just seeing, how many people are just seeing hieroglyphics or do you actually know what you're, you think you're looking at? So we'll wait for you to respond, don't know. So this is all Greek, this is scary. So I know two languages. I know how to speak English and I know how to read these things. So in time, these things to re repetition is being able to do these. And it says, and so what I'm looking at here, think about that you're in the driver's seat of your family car and you need to put your, your adult person on the right path. What this is, is this is a roadmap to how we're going to look at it. So when I look at this, this is how the Afghan is gonna look like when it's done. So each stitch represents something. The wonderful thing about this is that when I bought my book when I was 14 at the craft store, you realize that the symbols get used over and over and over. And so then the stitches become like they make sense, right? It's, it's like the journey of where we're gonna go from, from the bottom all the way to the top. The, the advantage to yarnspirations.com is that they're one of the very few companies that are still using this concept because the advantage to this, when you look at this, you don't need to know a word of English because the symbols all have its own meaning no matter what language you speak. So when I'm thinking about this is that I'm working. So when you're reading these kind of um, 
things. Let me see if I can get a close up. Can you tell me if you're reading from left to right or right to left? Anybody can have the answer to that? And how many people don't care? <laughs> So lots of people are answering the question. You read both ways, right to left, left to right. It depends on your row, that's correct answer. So, you know, you're already learning something. So Car Carmela says she doesn't know, it's a trick question. Oh my goodness, so, oh my goodness. So let's explain how you know. And how you know is that you gotta look for where the chain three is. The chain three, is usually the start of a row. So there was something underneath this and you chain three. And so when you chain three, you follow your eyes going to the left. But then when you get to the other side, you chain one and you follow your eyes to the right. Does it, does it matter if you're left or right-handed? No, not with these things, no. So you just have to look where those chains are to start the row. And then that you just follow your eyes. So just follow the row. Or what's that toucan bird? Follow your nose. It always knows. So you just keep following and zigzagging it all the way to the top. When we have the crochet um, version of this in video format, we're going to be taking you through steps by steps in order to do it. So we're going to follow our way up. What I want, if, you, if anybody's got a pen and a paper right now, what I want you to write down and write down is rows number 14 and eight to 18, 14 to 18. Anybody writing that down, that's gonna be a, a important number. So write down 14 to 18, 14 to 18, please. And the reason why I'm having you write that down, if you're, if you're tight, 14 and 18 is not the rope to be tight on. Even for me as a regular crocheter, I need it to be loose. So just remember 14 to 18 and that it's also covered in the tutorial version as well. So this is going to be building up on top of those square, uh, squares that we're going to build today. So we're gonna get you started. So this is my practice one, the very first time I ever went through it. And I used my Karen one pound for this. And I just wanted to get the concept of how it's working out in a circle. And there's also a diagram available for you on this. And all you just need to do is 18 of this. So when you look at this information, I know a lot of paperwork. It's kind of like tissue or toilet paper, it just never ends. So what we have here is that we have the diagram here and you have to make a set number of six across, six and six. Now I'm kind of like, okay, do I really want it to be um, all symmetrical or do I want to switch out where those are going to be? So what you can do, if you're a person that likes symmetry, then you may not want, you, you may want it like this, but if you like it to be more artistic, you can just change the order on which of these squares are. So we have to do is six squares in order to begin. And that diagram I just showed you is what's filling in here. And then the other six just join to the top. And then when you're ready and have that done, you turn it upside down and you do the same thing going up and you attach that side. So the center is where you need to get started in order to play, in order to get it. So do you wanna see a sample? So let's show you a sample and this is from there. So cam uh, front camera, please. So here is a sample. I will take oohs and ahs right now. Ooh, uh, it's like fireworks. So you have to have one set of squares in order to build it up. And what you just saw in that diagram is all of those stitch work all done up in real time, right? And it is so pretty. Smashing, let's see your, absolutely fantastic. You can do this. You honestly can do this. There's 10 different stitches to be able to, our combinations in order to do this. And you can do this. Now, my was thinking to my point of view, you know, because I'm an overachiever. And I was thinking of my point of view, I really liked the rows. I really liked the rows and what they did. And I thought to myself, well, what if I get rid of those motifs and actually come up with something new? Well, honey, that was an alcoholic session, wouldn't happen. So this particular um, project is, is that that chart cannot be duplicated all the way across. Okay, it actually has to be uh, done up in a way that it makes sense. So there's no magic number of saying, I just want to do a baby size and here's the number. So what I had Daniel do 
It took a lot of coercing, if you tell me, if you ask me. But what I had him do is on a Photoshop, I had him lay the charts over and match and match and match. And I also thought about what happens if you at home don't have chunky yarn? What if you just have the four ply good stuff, the super saver, all that jazz? What would be that magic number? So I had figured all that out for you already. So I've given you that information so that you can use regular size yarns. So anything that cannot be done, so anything that I could not figure out, any, anybody know? Anybody that I could not know? Uh, I don't even know if I'm making sense. So one thing I was not able to figure out, I was not able to figure out yardage. That's right, that's one of them. And I could not figure out how to t make six motifs go into like nine or make it larger that way. So in my suggestion, if you wanted to do this in regular size yarn, you can do it. You just have to do a bigger border in order to get it to, to work out. So that's one of those things where I couldn't just say, well, use four motifs instead of six. So six is the magic number, but I was able to figure out how to make it wider. So we'll do that. So what is a motif, uh, says Emma, a motif is this. So it is the centerpiece of a square. It's also it could be an overlay. So I've been working on a lot of American stuff lately, even though I'm Canadian. So this is a motif. So it's like an add on also. So we have a lot of American stuff coming up on our channel real soon. So what we want to do is that we want to work with that. So uh, where do you find the calculations? So that if you go on the crochetcrowd.com, my website, and look up the motif sampler, you will find all of that information uh, there. So what I want to show you today is how to get started on this. And we also have, I know, the dreaded diagrams. I know you think you can get away with it that easily. So let me just figure out my notes here. <laughs> You talk amongst yourselves. Hey, Mikey. Um, oh, can you remind everybody what size hook you're using with the soft essentials? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to be using a six and a half millimeter size cake. Uh, crochet hook. And if the purchase is our... Sorry, I'm getting buried by my desk here. Red Heart Soft Essentials is the yarn of choice for this. Uh, I didn't even know what this was until Allie suggested to do this pattern. So I had to go and find it on michaels.ca and I ordered it online. So it's like a chunky weight, but it's not like, um, how would I, if I were to describe it against Bernat Saute Chunky, it's not the same monster. It's actually soft. So it's actually uh, really, it's thick, but it really, it feels like a squishy um, marshmallow. So, and it really drapes really quite beautifully. So, uh, Meaty says she wears more diagrams uh, come with patterns. Yarn Inspirations has been doing really good with that. So, we have a lot of cool stuff happening this summer. So, you just got to stay paying attention. So, we're going to go back down to the table there, Stacy. And what we have is right here. So, we have the crochet diagram. So, anybody can tell me the difference between the two? I'm looking. So, Johnny. Uh, uh, Johnny likes marshmallows, so that's a good thing. Here we go. Um, I don't have any bulky yarn. I have a medium yarn. Um, if you were to substitute your hook, I would probably use um, a five and a half size I. If you're just going to use four ply, um, like Super Saver, Karen One Pound, anything like that. So you need at least three different colors. So colors A, B, and C. So Okay, so um, actually you were answering my question. I thought it was a statement. <laughs> so what we have here is that here's the motifs. The only difference is, is the color. They're both exactly the same thing. It's giving you suggestions on where to change your colors. Sorry, uh, where to change your colors if you wish. But I want to show you what I did because I don't always like to follow the rules. So what I did is that I liked table down here. Let's get the right side of this project up. What I did, I know oohs and ahs, that I have three colors, right? So I did the first section here in pink, and then I don't just jump to the next one of those same motif. I, I'm like an assembly car person. I used to be an automotive uh, designer in my past. So everything to me has stages and steps. So then I did the second center in the green and then the third here. And then what I did is then I did also the other side at the same time. And so I ended up with two greens centers. But if you look at the centers, this green 
has the pink around it, but this green had blue. So you can see that I really did make it really random. So if you like random, that's just the way to do it. So my problem is, is if you do one motif all, all like this, it's easier to do random when you're doing it in stages like that, right? So the colors that we used here in this particular one was the peony pink, peony pink. We had sea foam, which is the blue, and then minty, which, which is the green. And if you look at the original sample, uh, Ali and I were talking behind the scenes about this, and uh, you know, the, that's okay. But I like a little bit of color in my life, and there's so many beautiful colors, like brown, really. I mean, oh, I mean, I love it, okay? Like, it's fabulous, it, it does go with my house, but I just want something colorful in my life right now because we're all stuck at home, so why not enjoy the color as we go? So what we're looking at here is when you look at this diagram, you're looking at exactly what you see here. So you have your center and then your thick one here, and then it converts into a square, and then you got two rounds here. So that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So um, we're gonna be using um, a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. I'm using a soft essentials today. And, I'm, and if you're gonna substitute with the four ply super saver, probably a five and a half millimeter size I crochet hook. And without further ado, Let's get going. So let me just reset here for a second. So behind the scenes, what I like to do is that I always put this just outside the camera so you can't see it, but we're zooming today. So we're gonna make do. So you'll see all my little dirty secrets. So let's find my hook and we'll get you nice and close. So we wanna start off with our center. So how many are is in the center? Um, what, I don't understand the letter size hook. So a six and a half millimeter is a size K and a five and a half millimeter is um, size I. So us Canadians and UK and Australians, we like our millimeters, but the US, they like their letters. So that's what they have. So if, if this is already intimidating you, we do have a recording step-by-step, step, nice and slow for you if you wanna do that. If you use Red Heart with Love six and a half millimeter, I would probably recommend probably going down to a five and a half millimeter um, size I. That's what I would think about doing. Uh, so um, the US, say, uh, I'm a US, I like the millimeters. So the US, uh, the millimeters are more accurate. So we're going to create a slip knot and we're just going to wrap it around your hook or your finger and create our slip knot. And so how many chains does the diagram say that we have to do? And there will be a recording of this video. So how many um, chains does it state to do? Okay, I saw lots of sixes. Eh, nope, six. So there's five chains and one slip stitch. Bum, bum, bum. I know. Uh, where will the recording be? We'll have it available to you on YouTube if you want that. And you'll just have to see me tomorrow. Can you repeat the slip knot one more time? So, so okay, so you're gonna gossip. I'm gonna gossip about Allie. I'm pointing at Allie on the screen over here. She's waving, giving me those butterfly eyes. And wrap the hook as if I'm gossiping around here and then just fist it. Okay, so you, you just fist your yarn and your fingers. Now we're gonna play a game of leapfrog, okay? So how we do it is that this froggy over here has to jump over this froggy, but just land on the other side of the froggy. But this froggy is now so excited that when he plays leapfrog, he jumps over the diving board and right up over top of your finger. And there is your slip knot right there. So quick, so wrap twice, fist it, play leapfrog. One goes over the other, so excited he jumps over the other but goes right up over the edge and like that. So we have that. Can you use a magic ring? You do want it to be open in the middle, but why not? You can try it and see if you like it. So we're going to chain five. So let's row, row, row our boat with chaining. This is why I don't have my uh, degree in teaching. So let's row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. So we have five rows, it's five chains, and we're just gonna come across and into the, the starting, and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through, and there we have that. So we have their center. So the crochet crowd will be, our, the, will be hosting the um, video for it as of tomorrow, as of eight o'clock, my time zone, Atlantic time zone. So we're gonna have our 
circle. So we're gonna start off with our spokes, like a spoke is in um, a bicycle, and we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three is your spoke, and then four and five is your space. So if you were to bend it over like this, that was what it would be looking like. And you're going to double crochet into the center of that ring. And so each one of these spokes are followed by a chain two. And we're gonna keep doing that around until we have how many spokes on the bicycle wheel? How many spokes do you think? Uh, is it the crochet crab? Well, it depends on my mood, but it's the crochet crowd. So, um, so you have eight spokes will be a total. So the chaining of three that we have, it counts as a spoke. So there will be a total of eight. So it's an even number. So I just do a whack at one time and then I count one spoke, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then chain two, one more spoke, so a double crochet. And before you can join it to the first spoke, you have to chain two. And I would keep your color. So you just gotta join it to the third chain up so that the spacing keeps the same in between. Allie, is there any questions at this moment? No questions right now. So, okay, Lisa says, I am too fast. Okay, so does Dora. Mm, so lost, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, um, what do I do? Maybe we start back after the okay, after can, can, our first chain. Okay, so let's okay, so let's restart. Okay, so we're gonna play our game of leapfrog. Okay, and you tell me when you're ready. Okay, so we're gonna start over, and we're gonna play and chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and insert your hook into the beginning chain and yarn over, pull through. And you say when I'm good, slip stitch to do the join. Tell me when I'm good. I think we're good. Are you sure? Geneva says we're good. And Dina says we're good. Well, says we're good, then we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. Now yep. we have to create the spokes of the wheel. So we're good. Da, da, da. So we're gonna chain five to start. So one, two, three, that's your first spoke. And four and five is your space. And in the center of that ring, you're going to double crochet. So to do the double crochet, you wrap and go right into the center of the ring, pull through, pull through two and two, that's a double crochet. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. So Donald says they have uh, they have all their squares done already. Wow, they're so fast. So chain two, one and two, and double crochet. And one and two. Let's move your hand slower to show the ring, says Geneva. So here we go. So okay, it's gonna be. Let me. Where am I? Here's the bionic. It is so fast, you can barely see it. Yarning over, pulling it through and through. And then chain two. Geneva, is that better? Judy says she'll wait for my video. It's really hard to teach online in real time. And Judy's lost. Oh, Judy. Come on, Judy. Put that hook in your hand. The Michaels team and behind the scenes, you should see them. Oh my God, they're knitting and crocheting. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Allie here. I'm just popping in to remind you that this class will be recorded and it's available at, it will be available at michaels.com slash classes tomorrow. So you can Rewatch everything that we're doing right now tomorrow on michaels.com slash classes. So we'll also have a copy of the video over at the crochet crowd.com and also the crochet crowd on YouTube.
the YouTube uh, is CC for those hearing impaired and deaf, as well as we have it in left hand as well. So we need eight spokes. So how many spokes was there eight? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Oh, don't, oh, Stephanie, don't feel dumb. Don't honestly, don't feel dumb. Don't beat yourself up. It's only a hook and yarn. Okay, don't beat yourself up about it, like seriously. Okay, so we want eight spokes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then join to the third chain up. We're all learning as we go. There. Oh, getting a lot of dropouts there, Allie. We need some like refreshments or something. We need oh, some no. chocolate. I think a lot of people, what we've seen is that a lot of people will watch it now and absorb everything and then come back to it later. Mm -hmm. So that's my piece of advice. That's what I would do if I was crocheting right now. Mm -hmm. I just absorb everything. You absorb. <laughs> just like a sponge. Awesome. I think we're ready for the next round. Okay. Okay, so let's keep on going and I'm just peeking over the corner what we're doing next. So this time we're doing the four double cro crochet cluster. So if the double crochet really <laughs> through your brain, let's do a cluster and really put it over the edge. So let's, uh, we're gonna chain three first. So one, two, three, let me get you nice and close here. And then in the same one that you did the join, you wanna put in three double crochets, but when you do it, you wanna put them together. So wrap the hook and in going into the same one, pull through and pull through two and hold it. And you wanna do that three or two more times so that you have four loops on your hook. So you're gonna wrap and in. So um, we are, uh, let's address that question uh, guys. Um, so uh, people are thinking it was a beginning class. There are gonna be beginning classes um, coming up in the future. we're learning. So once you have all four, you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of them. And then you have to chain five to jump to the next spoke. So one, two, three, four, five. So here is a double crochet. So it's right in the top. So see this spoke? That's where we're gonna play. So we're gonna wrap the hook first, going in, pull through, and if you did yours all wrong, doesn't matter as long as you did, as long as you did it the way that you love it, it doesn't matter. Right, Allie? Absolutely. My friend says, if you're gonna stick your hook in the wrong hole, keep sticking your hook in the wrong hole and you'll never get it wrong. So, because it'll always look right then. So once you have all four, pull through and then chain five and move along. We're gonna let you in on a secret. There's no yarn police. Oh my God, Allie, you're just giving it all away all on the first date. <laughs> so consistency is the key. So if you're always doing it wrong, honestly, I did the Catherine wheel stitch is my most favorite stitch. And I learned after, swear to God, 25 years that I had been doing it wrong for my entire life. And it would make sense why my project never looked like the original, but mine was so much better <laughs> in retrospect. So is it, you're going right into the stitch. So you're going right into a stitch when you do that. So how many of these double crochet clusters are you gonna have? Eight, that's right. Nancy Lopez, she's my friend from California. She better get that answer right. <laughs> she is one of my CC girls, so close captioning. Nancy Lopez is here with us today. So one, two, three, four. I'm really sorry. I, I hate when people drop out because I'm doing something wrong. So we'll just keep retrying. And it helps us choose the right projects for the future. 
Mandy had a great comment. It's her first time and she's loving it. She says, you're a fantastic teacher, but she knows she's going to have to watch again later. Oh, we can have a double date later or something, right? <laughs> you, me, counting stitches in the night. And you say, honey, I'll be in bed in a while. I'm going to spend some time with Mikey. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pull through. Just one more row. How many people use that excuse? Just one more row. I use it with Daniel. I just want to finish one more row and about you know, half hour later. Would you be able to show before you finish up this round just one cluster stitch at a little bit of a slower pace? Sure. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we're going to go right into the top of the stitch and I pinch down the, my finger. So I, I wrap the hook and I go right into the stitch. And then a yarn over pull through. And I only pinch that down to hold it from going all over the place and then pull through two and hold. If you've ever done a two together stitch, that's what it is, but it's a cluster. It's, and you keep doing that until you get four of those done. That's why it's a four double cro crochet cluster. Okay, and then chain five to finish. Is that okay, Allie? Yep, I think everyone's doing good. So I'm the queen of like, of many things, but I'm the queen of trying to avoid these tail ends. So when I like to um, cut stuff, I like to cut it in a way that it makes sense so that I don't have to weave in any ends. Anybody else hate weaving in ends? Um, I know I do. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Ali, I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I can't do two things at one time. So I'm just weaving them in the stitch work itself. So then when I go over top of this tail, it's going to be stitch itself. So if you can do that, you can avoid a lot of stuff. So the next round is kind of fun. So we're, I'm going to switch off to the blue. Mikey, would you be able to point to where we are in the written instructions so people that are reading along can, um, can see? Mm -hmm. So we're about to enter the universe of number three. So round three on page number two of five. Does that make sense? Yep, thanks. And in the diagram, we are now on, sorry, it's hard to do it with the phone. We're now on this blue round right here. This is a fun round. This is what makes it all nice and stiff. So if you're looking to get your project nice and stiff, now we're gonna do it. So I would create a slip knot like we already showed in the past. And when you go to join it, I would join it right to an actual space itself. Okay, does that make sense? And go right in and we're gonna do a standing single crochet. Anybody not do a standing single crochet before? I love it. So how did I join round two? I just did a slip stitch to the top of the first cluster. Never heard of a standing. Honey, it's a game changer. Allie, do you know how to do a standing? I do. <laughs> Maybe we'll go to the movies later and hold hands or something. <laughs> okay. So a standing single crochet is done. You put the slip knot onto the hook first and then yarn over the top of where you want to go. So this could be a stitch. In this case, it's a space and just pull through so that there's two loops on the hook. Some of you probably already do it and just don't know the name of it. And then yarn over, pull through two, and that's a stand, standing single crochet. So that, that's instead of joining it, chain one and single crochet, you can just get right to the action. So forget the foreplay and get right into the stitch and just do that. So just move it on over to the side. 
So, um, so Laval says she's been doing that since day number one. So that's kind of fun. So that's counting as one. So then you're going to put two more friends in there. So two more single crochets. So one and two. I'll show you one space in real time and then we'll slow down for the next space. Once you get three in there, we're going to chain two. And then in the same space, you want to do three single crochets. So one, two, and three. So each space is going to have three single crochet, chain two, three single crochet. Did you notice that I went up over top of the straggler too? Mm -hmm. Not just a pretty face here. I don't like sewing. So now we just immediately just jump over. But before we jump, we have to do a chain one to jump over the cluster. So like leapfrog and then come into the next space. So three single crochet. So one, two, three, chain two, and then three double or single crochet back in there. One, two, three. And you're going to notice that this is going to open everything up beautifully. And to jump over, you have to chain one first and keep doing that. So, Mitria, you got it, you said? So, we just keep doing that in each space all around. So, three, two, three. Just remember three, two, three, and then chain one to jump. So, three, two, three, jump. Three, two, three, jump. Okay, and then jump and see how it's opening up beautifully. Isn't that wonderful? Are you crocheting in the, no, I'm not, I'm not crocheting in the chain. I'm crocheting around the chain. You could if you really wanted to, but okay. Can you go a bit slower? Okay, so let's go slower. So single crochet, one, single crochet, two, single crochet, three, chain two, and then three more single crochets. So one, two, three. So Heather's saying, could you make all the motifs the same color? Absolutely. So Sheeta says that she is dropping out, yeah, but have a great day. So I'm going right around the chain. So see, right around the chain. Start again. Um, oh, you're starting again. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's great. Teresa asked if I can share how you slow down a YouTube video. Mikey. Wants, wants me to do it? Nope. I just, do you know off the top of your head? Yes. I'm going to have to click over to YouTube. If yes. So on the player window, there's a gear and it's usually on the bottom right of the, of the player box of the video window. And that gear allows you to change the language and it allows you to change the speed of the videos. So if you're going too fast, then I will start talking like this and moving much slower. But then if you're saying I'm just getting long winded then you, I can go really quick and we can go single crochet, single crochet. So you can change the speed of anything like that. It is so difficult to um, f uh, film in the right speed for everybody. So it's a great option. So it's a gear. And uh, because we CC all of our videos on the Crochet Crowd YouTube channel, all of our videos are available in 35 languages. Even though I only speak one, isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So when you get all the way back around, you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. So um, anyway, my friend Nancy Lopez here, she does the CCing, which makes that language translation possible. So now that we've just gone over stitch work, we could just safely just trim out some of our tails. Don't leave those for the birds, my friends. Throw those right in the garbage. Yarn tails are not birds' best friends. And then we're going to move on. So we're now just halfway through already. So Pamela says she's behind, but she's hanging in there. So there we go. So it's really quite awesome. 
So are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Yeah. Allie, any, any questions, Allie? Not right now. Are we drinking yet? <laughs> Not yet. I will have a latte later. I need something pink <laughs> <laughs> that involves a stem. Okay, here we go. Anybody else need a drink right about now? Let's have a drink. So there we go. No drinking in Zoom. That's my best class ever. Okay, here we go. Let's begin our next version. So now this time we're gonna get square. So we're, gonna, we're in an octagon shape now and we're now going to get square. So here we go. So in order to get there, we need to go to this chain two space. So how are we gonna get there from here? Ali, what do you think? Slip stitch, yes, Laval says slip stitch. See, you're half paying attention, that's awesome. So here we go. So we're gonna slip our way all the way. So slip sliding away. I don't know what song that is, but it's from my childhood. So you're gonna slip all the way to the chain two space, and then that's where we're gonna start. This round, if you can count to four, you are awesome. Not that you're not, but you're awesome if you can count to four. And what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain one and single crochet in the same one. And what we're gonna do is just leap, like jump, 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 jump all the way around. So watch how we jump. We're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. And we come into the space that is in between. So right on top of the cluster in single crochet. And then we're gonna chain four again. So one, two, three, four. Sarah's getting the slip sliding away music. That's awesome. And then you go to the next chain two space. So now we're going to create a corner right in this next one. So see how there's two chain fours on its own? We're now going to make this turn the corner. So let's begin to do that. Chain four to start. So one, two, three, four. And this is on the chart. And you're going to go into the chain one space right here. And it's going to be a treble. So wrap twice. And I'll show this to you again. So just going to pull through, pull through two and two, and two all the way to the top. Do you see that the corner is starting to take effect? Now, in order to do the final corner, I need you to do a trick. Watch what I do because it saves you counting later. So you're gonna say one, two, pinch. Okay, what was that? One, two, pinch. Where I pinched is where we wanna go back into. So you can count all the way back if you want to, but if you go one, two, pinch, three, four, five, where I pinch is where I want to go, move your thumb out of the way and go right in there and slip stitch. Is that magic or is that magic? And then chain one. Okay, I'll show you two one more time. It's magic. I don't like counting if I don't have to. So one, two, pinch, three, four, five, Move your thumb out of the way and slam your hook right into that stitch where you pinched and pull through and through and then chain one. And uh, then double crochet. So Kelly Clark, we are on round number four during the first corner. So we're just gonna treble right back into there and there is your corner. Now we're gonna chain four and jump to the next one. And I'll show you the next corner. So one, two, three, four. So I want to show it on the chart. So where we are in the chart, we're making our corner. Making sense? On the second round, where did you insert the hook? Um, on the second round, we, we did it right on top of the stitch. So right on top of the stitch. And this is recorded, so we will have it to you later tomorrow. So you chain four and then jump. So you jump to the next space and then jump. What's that song where the kids are singing? I think it's called Jump. It's not Jump. What is that song, Allie? Um, jump. Michaels, do you know? What's, what was that song? Oh, wham, jump. No. No, it isn't. Um, they were boys. It was a hit. Uh, I believe you're talking about crisscross. Crisscross. Yes, totally crisscross. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna do another corner. So right here. So you have two that are on their own. So you, now that you have an, a corner already, you can kind of see where it's gonna go. And that's where we're gonna play. So we're going to do, so jumping by Van Halen. So we're gonna do a treble. So let's do our magic trick. One, two, can you say it with me? Pinch, three, four, five. So, okay, so great observation. Somebody just made this observation. Is the direction say to Pico in the 16 and I'm doing in the five? Why am I doing that? So I pinch, I slip stitch chain one. I did it originally in the chain six and the, the corner looks lopsided when I did that. So this is one of those things where because I'm teaching online, I can show you the tricks. That's all part of the notes in the history. When I did the other one, it went like this. So I'm having you do it in the fifth one back so that it looks more equal. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Allie? Yeah. Yeah. Just go with it, okay? This is when you fake it, okay? You say, yes, Mikey, that's, that's, that sounds okay. And then you treble. Do you see how it looks like it's in the center? It's because I'm having you go in the fifth one. So one, two, three, four. Because I'm sponsored by Your Inspirations, is that I'm allowed to improvise when I see something that may not be working out so right. So sometimes things work out on paper, but they don't necessarily work out as a human being trying to do stuff. So that's there. So I'm just chaining my fours and jumping. So I'm only worrying about the corners when I get there. So there's two spaces here. And let's do another corner. One, two, three, four, treble into the space. So I'm gonna speed up. And then do my magic trick. One, two, pinch, three, four, five, slide, jam in, pull through, chain one, and then treble. And then keep moving. One, two, three, four. So um, you did your, Margot did your corner too early. That's okay. You can just frog it. It's not like it's knitting. Knitting when I screw up. Oh my God. Now, Ali, you're a knitter, right? I do both. <laughs> oh, I knew you were that kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the worst when you mess up with knitting. Oh, yeah. I'm not very good at being able to get everything back on my needles. I know. I totally create words that are not in Whipsters. <laughs> I, just, I just get so mad at myself. I, I tell you, I, I did a, while well, I'm finishing up here, I did a European cruise and I swear to God, I was going to teach myself knitting on this whole cruise. And about, you know, halfway through, I said, screw it. And I bought a crochet hook in, in Italy <laughs> just to keep my addiction of yarn going. <laughs> Because I thought, well, I'm just going to get off crochet for two weeks. It wasn't going to happen. So anyway, so once you get all the way back around, you are going to slip stitch. And we're almost done, my friends. And you can see that we've gone from a square to, or sorry, a circle to a square. Did I buy yarn in Italy? No, they were closed. Yeah. Okay, so we have this. So now we just have two more easy, easy rounds, like easy rounds. Yeah. So um, never leave home without your hooks. I know you only did that once. I did it once on another cruise. I did it twice. I never even considered. So I'm going to show you the next round. It's so simple. If you remember the answer four, that's all you need to know. So you're just going to slip stitch into the space and you're going to put in four single crochets in each space, including that little doohickey that's on the corner here. And that will naturally turn the corner on its own. So it'll be here, here, here and then the doohickey, and then here, 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 all the way to the corner. So chaining up, oh, so hold on. So it's just four single crochets in each of the spaces going around. So we do have a, um, um, videos on this for those that it's too fast. It's really hard to teach in real time. 
Okay, and then in the doohickey, just put in four. So it's that loop that's created with the slip stitch. And then turn the corner and then don't go into the corner, just stay on these spaces. So is anybody actually learning anything <laughs> other than corny jokes and Allie does it both ways? <laughs> yes. Lucy says yes. Monica says yes. Ruth says yes. So we're trying. It's hard. The we nice had somebody that, say that they are chart challenged and this has really been helpful. Oh, we do have a video, Ali. I think it's, it might have actually, well, I do have it on my channel, but it's a how to read those charts. It is like 35 minutes of fabulousness. And uh, honestly, I kept getting asked the question. So I just said, I'm just gonna teach it the way I think it's gotta be done. It was 35 minutes by time. And I do so many voiceovers and we do testing questions. Um, I'm actually kind of proud of the series, but you know. Well, your Pico, yes, the Pico. So everything that the way I'm teaching now is actually in the way that is taught in the tutorial. The nice thing about my relationship with Michaels is that they're letting me do my thing. They want me to do it my way so that it's consistent with how I teach. Because if you go to my videos and I'm all sudden serious, uh, here and I'm, and I'm not there it's not the it's not the same education but what is the name of the pattern i think they had a link for that i'll leave that in your capable hands they just posted a link thank you the pattern name is the motif sampler crochet throw for anybody looking for it as well I'm excited. Uh, Ali, you can imagine the colors that are going to come out of this thing. Like you think about it, like really, really lately, the colors that have been people using up their stash has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize they had a yarn shop in their own head. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. Um, okay. Okay. So I, I'm coming all the way around. I've been doing the curbside with Michaels. They're actually really fast, like too fast to the point where I've actually ordered twice on the same day because I needed a fix twice because I'm an emotional crocheter. So I just like, I had, it was only one ball. I just had to do something. <laughs> and then, anyway, so then Michael says, we're processing your order. So I hold my phone and then it says, we're ready. And I'm like, I'm in my car. <laughs> Honey, I need a life. So there we go. So the curbside has been awesome, just so you know. So we have one more round to do. So what do we think? So I'm going to tell you something here that's in, not in this pattern. It's also in the tutorial. I found with myself that I lost my corner once I was um, putting these together. So I put a chain one space in between the two stitches in the corners and it looks so much nicer when you're joining them. So it's not in the pattern. It's not written anywhere. That's my own advice. And all we just need to do in the final is just that you single crochet in each of the stitches going around and where the four are on the corner, the first two are going to be a single crochet. And then I would slam in a chain one there and then do the other two like that. Do you ever improvise like that, Allie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I tried it without that um, gap, Allie, and I sewed it together, and it just was like buckling. So I thought, well, why not just slow, uh, throw in a stitch and just fake it, right? Oh, absolutely. So once I get to the space, the, the corner, I just put in a chain one. It's so unnoticeable, but when you're going to sew, to, uh, sew it, it makes all the world. So this is on round number six. So it's mentioned in the tutorial, but the pattern doesn't have that because it's an improvisation. So the video will have how to make one of these. Also will have how to sew them together. And then it takes you through all of the 37 rows, step-by-step step on how to do it. And I'm actually pretty proud of the video. 
And as I mentioned before, we wrote down the numbers uh, 14 through 18. You are gonna wanna be loose, and I addressed that in the video too, because if you're not loose, it's gonna suck in. Okay, it's a Jenny Craig program, that particular stitch. It's gonna make it get skinny. So we don't wanna do that, girls. We wanna um, keep it nice and loose. Girls and boys. Um, so the tutorial will be available tomorrow. So sweatpants, uh, <laughs> Carmela says. So um, the video will be available tomorrow. Everything that you need to know, including the border, uh, is all gonna be handled tomorrow. I'll CC'd and uh, closed captioned, as well as in left and right-handed versions. So April says she needs to order more sweatpants. <laughs> Daniel has been leaving the house in his, uh, his uh, sweat bottoms. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, everybody else is doing it. And I said, that doesn't mean you do it. So anyway, I told him he couldn't get in the car. So the next thing I know, he's in the car with his little Canadian sweatpants on. I'm like, that is not right. <laughs> I said, so if we go anywhere, he's got to stay in the car. I know, I'm a little bit of control freak. So I'm apparently mean, that's okay. But at least my man isn't gonna be in public wearing sweatpants. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we hope that you're learning a little bit today. So this is the end of this. So if it were me and I were you, I would consider it like a car, a car, um, a car, just do each one. Whenever there's a color change, that's when you stop and then do the next one. And so you don't have to keep reading the pattern over and over and your memory will kick in. So you can just start pounding these off really quick. And I think we may have some messages from our friends at Michael's here. And this is Katie coming online and here she comes. Yeah, hey guys. Um, Mikey, thank you so much. First of all, this has been mesmerizing to watch. I don't know if you could see my eyes. I was leaning in going, okay, now where is he going now? How am I going to do this when we get offline? Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. You obviously have a, a huge audience and everyone's so excited to be here. I know you guys probably enjoyed him as much as I did and I'm sure we all learned a little bit. Um, but just a reminder, we have classes um, daily now with michaels.com. So I'll send a link here in the chat, but if you go to michaels.com backslash classes, um, you can actually sign up for any classes coming up. They're all free for you guys, or you can see videos that we've posted from all of our past classes. So if you want to learn how to do resin pour or crochet a blanket, or if you want to make a new cake with some candy melts, we've got all those videos for you guys. So um, thanks so much again for joining us. Sign up for our classes, and um, we can't wait to have Mikey back. So I'm going to be back um, June 6th, I believe. Allie, is that firm? Well, June say light, lightly firm. Lightly. <laughs> <laughs> is that firm? No, it's lightly firm. Um, so <laughs> June 6th may be the day I'm back. We have something that's fun and fabulous. It's not a... Um, a basic level. Um, I kind of said, and maybe you can have a, some uh, point of view here. I think that these kind of videos are fun, but I also want to challenge you in some way that when you come off and there's another video ready for you so that you can actually start going through, I think it's kind of cool to watch you have development and actually learning something more than the basics. I could be wrong, but um, the next project is, um, is really quite something. It's really beautiful. So hopefully they're going to stick that Allie, can we get a, a firm? Firm? I think we're it's working fine. on it. Yeah. Oh, 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 now Michael's is like, yeah, we're working on it. So we're working on it. Um, it's beautiful. You got to love it. And uh, any other questions uh, at this time? Any other questions? I think everybody's just really appreciative. Thanks again so much, Mikey. We, we're so glad to have you. Okay, so uh, remember tomorrow is the launch of the video, the actual tutorial, it's an hour and a half of fabulousness. It'll be available on the Crochet Crowd, the Crochet Crowd YouTube channel, and Michaels will have a recording available for you this, to, uh, and this is also available on YouTube as well. And that's it for now, and we hope you have a great afternoon, and we see you again real soon right here. Bye.